tonight on Cronkite News. It is day two of the final Pac-12 men's basketball tournament. With the Devils out, what you can expect for the rest of the tournament. Plus, Mountain America Stadium has a new look for the offseason. We'll tell you why the stadium is now being used as a golf fairway and how you can get in on the action. And mothers struggling with postpartum depression now have medication that could help. But the cost could restrict access to those who need it most. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Lauren Avenetti. And I'm Azure Heyer. Thank you for joining us. It is tournament time and it is bittersweet for the Pac-12 as this will be the last Pac-12 tournament as we know it. Certainly the last for ASU and Arizona. Yes, Lauren. And for the Wildcats, they are hoping to end their Pac-12 era with a tournament title. And they're off to a good start. Arizona easily handled their first round matchup against USC with a 21 point victory, 70 to 49 was the final. This was a revenge game for Arizona who had just lost to the Trojans. The Wildcats, who have never lost in the Pac-12 tournament under Tommy Lloyd, are here to make a statement, but Lloyd says now is not the time for reflection. Our deal is focusing internal, uh, game by game, and we're not getting any more complicated than that. We'll let you guys, you know, get all sentimental about last Pac-12 stuff, this and that, how many games in a row, I don't care about any of that. I just want to know who we're playing tomorrow. As for ASU, the Sun Devils have been eliminated from the tournament, losing to the University of Utah 90-57, to a huge margin of defeat. Yeah, sure, definitely not what Bobby Hurley had in mind. Cronkite News reporter Philip Level is in Las Vegas with more on the end of ASU's time in the Pac-12. The Sun Devils were on the wrong side of history at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Their 33-point loss is tied for the largest margin of defeat in the history of the Pac-12 men's basketball tournament. This is not acceptable for, you know, uh, what my vision is for our basketball program. ASU's defense struggled mightily, allowing the Utes to score 59% from the field, which includes 12 made three-pointers. The Sun Devils only shot 31% from the floor and only three three-pointers. You just have have a vision for something better, you know, it's, 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 uh, that, that's going to be the lasting memory of, of us playing in the Pac-12. Wow. This was not how the Sun Devils envisioned their final Pac-12 basketball game. Head coach Bobby Hurley took responsibility for this loss and said that there's a lot of changes coming to this ASU team. Rebuild the front court, rebuild everything, just start over. Almost. I failed miserably in that regard because you know, this is not a reflection of, of my belief system. The Sun Devils ended their season losing six of their last seven games. ASU will be looking forward to new beginnings in the Big 12 Conference next season. For the Utah Utes, they earned their first win against ASU in three years. They advanced to the quarterfinals and will face the Colorado Buffaloes. In Las Vegas, I'm Philip Level, Cronkite News. The WAC tournament is also going on in Las Vegas this weekend, where the GCU men's and women's teams will try to run the table. Let's start on the women's side, as the Lopes have the number two seed. GCU was predicted to win the WAC in preseason coaches poll, and now the stage is set as their first game tips off tomorrow. During head coach Molly Miller's four-year tenure, GCU has advanced to the Western Athletic Conference Tournament Final twice, and they're hoping to make it back after falling short in the semis last year. We have tough teams ahead, but we're a tough team, and I think we've really come together to talk about what we can do differently, the energy we can um, bring. We know it's going to be a battle, but we put in a lot of time and effort for this moment. On to GCU men's hoops. The team is getting ready to play their first game in the WAC tomorrow. Reporter Riley Swenson made the trip to Las Vegas and has the details on what the Lopes can expect in Sin City. Here at the Orleans Arena in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, the WAC men's basketball tournament is in full swing. GCU has earned the number one seed, meaning they have a bye into the semifinals and won't play until tomorrow night. After having a full week off ahead of last Saturday's regular season finale, Coach Bryce Drew says the rest this week is just more of the same for his team. 
Your routine's a little broken anyway, uh, but uh, we're just excited to get there. I think being in the building, seeing uh, we're going to go watch some of the other games, being able to do that, I think will just build you know more uh, more more excitement for the guys. That group of guys in reference has led GCU to a 17 and three record in the WAC and had several players receive postseason accolades. Senior forward Gabe McLaughlin is one of those players who was honored by the conference, making first team all WAC and says the regular season success was good, but there is still work to be done. It's, it's good to have, and it's good to have that going into, um, you know, tournament play. But the important thing is, you know, we got to realize that, you know, that was then, you know, we, it's one game, you know, one game at a time. And if we don't handle business, you know, outright champs can definitely change to, you know, not have an attorney uh, championship. Tip-off for tomorrow is set for 6 p.m. right here at the Orleans Arena as GCU will take on the winner of fourth-seeded Seattle U and eighth-seeded Cal Baptist. In Las Vegas, Riley Swenson, Cronkite News. Looking at the two possible opponents for the Lopes, they swept Cal Baptist in the regular season while splitting with Seattle, with each team winning a game on their respective home floor. The Cardinal Cardinals are having a fruitful offseason with free agent pickups and a trade that gives them a bona fide backup quarterback. Right, Lauren. Arizona has agreed to trade wide receiver Rondale Moore to the Atlanta Falcons for quarterback Desmond Ritter. If the trade goes through, it will give the Cards a more experienced backup to Kyler Murray. And as for the free agent pickups, the team introduced them to the media today. They include linebacker Mac Wilson, offensive lineman Jonah Williams, defensive tackle Bilal Nichols, cornerback Sean Murphy Bunting, defensive tackle Justin Jones, and running back DJ Dallas. Getting Wilson and Murphy Bunting on the defensive side of the ball should make a big difference for the Cardinals. Mountain America Stadium has gone under quite the offseason makeover. Yes, they have. The iconic football field has turned into a one-of-a-kind driving range. Our Cronkite News reporter Danny Sullivan has more on the golf event open to the public. Mountain America Stadium has seen plenty of big hits over the years but none quite like this until the creation of Sparky's Fairway. Where else can you go to a football stadium, not during a sporting event, and hit golf balls onto the field? It's the first of its kind. I've never heard of any other university or stadium doing that, and so I think just being in such an iconic venue and getting to do something so unique and so special, you can't get that anywhere else, and that's very innovative of ASU, and it's perfect for our university. The ASU 365 Community Union is trying to use the stadium for more than just football and give Sun Devil fans a new experience. We helped activate the stadium 365 days a year, so that's part of our name, ASU 365. Uh, we do all sorts of different community program and we also have uh, rental opportunities. So anybody could come in and use the stadium for an event of their choosing. ASU 365 made their mark on Sparky's Fairway with a variety of games and challenges for golfers to enjoy. We basically have three different games that we you can play. Uh, so first one being the pie, uh, so you can hit all the different uh, pies, uh, knocking each one out. Uh, then second game is going to be hitting all the different logos, uh, so you can go around hitting those. Each shot, uh, you how many shots it takes you to hit that. And then you have the great one where the it's tying football and golf together. So first down, second down, third down, and then touchdown with the pitch fourth. Sparky's Ferry will be open from now until March 17th daily, where you can check out friends, family, students, and maybe even some reporters checking out this great venue. In Tempe, Danny Sullivan, Cronkite News. <laughs> Not too bad of a swing there, Danny. Maybe after a few more days out at Sparky's Fairway, he'll have it figured out. And the indoor football season is almost here, and Lauren, you know what they say, half the field, double the fun. You're right, Asher. The biggest move actually by a team this offseason was the Arizona Rattlers, as they actually moved. Coming up after the break, I had the opportunity to speak to Coach, Coach Guy about the move to the west side and what the team's goal is this season. I'm Adriana Gonzalez Chavez, and chances of rain are moving in through the valley. I tell you what to expect coming up next. What Conkite News means to me is Opportunity. We do news right at Cronkite News, serving a community ethically, honestly, and truthfully. And we can provide a necessarily different angle, different voice for those people that really need it. 
the students, they have a lot of passion for journalism. I get to do a lot of stories about the Hispanic community. And we have access to cover all of these sorts of events and get media coverage of all these different personalities and athletes, and that's just a huge thing. But it's also a chance for people here to be humanized. Individuals of all walks of life. Cronkite News will help take the next generation of journalists onto their next careers. I am old enough to remember Walter Cronkite. We're putting a lot of pride on his name because we are practicing a lot of the, the things that he did. I think he'd be smiling from ear to ear. I. 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 We are Cronkite. Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Welcome back. The indoor football league season begins this weekend and the Arizona Rattlers are looking to clinch yet another IFL Western title in their new West Side home. This season will be the first that the Rattlers play in Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale. The Rattlers previously played in downtown Phoenix since their inception in 1992. Head coach and team president Kevin Guy, who is in his 17th year as head coach, is excited about the move. I think the community's really taken us in. They've done a great job of supporting us so far. We've we've uh, raised our, our our season tickets like 40 percent. So it's been a great move for us so far. You know, you can't say enough about the West Side and just how they've taken to the team and and, and want to be a part of the uh, team. Our team wants to be a part of the community, so I think it's a great fit. The Rattlers will play their first game at Desert Diamond Arena on March 24th, where they will host the Vegas Nighthawks. To hockey now, where the ASU men's team wrapped up their season and said goodbye to one of their captains. As Cronkite News reporter Sammy Miller reports, the man who wore the C this year set a new standard for the position. As the Sun Devils near the end of their era as an independent program, Captain Tyler Gratton nears the end of his college career. In a short time, the graduate student made an immediate impact at Arizona State, both on and off the ice. He just gets it. He's mature and, and he's weathered. His experience that he brought in, just he made us better from the, the minute he got here. So we uh, were thrilled with, with our time with, with Tyler and we'll, we'll miss him tremendously, but he's a kid that, that will forever be a big part of our program. Tyler Gratton took a big risk leaving his home state of Pennsylvania, traveling all the way across the country to play here at Arizona State, a newer program on the rise for his final year of eligibility. But he said that he is beyond blessed for the relationships that he has made and couldn't imagine playing anywhere else. It's just really incredible. Like, the feeling that you get that you're able to become so close with these guys that you never really crossed path with before, and now you're all playing for each other every day. It's unbelievable. For teammate and linemate Matthew Copperud, skating with Grattan this season has left an indelible impression that will last moving forward. He's a great leader. He keeps our group connected through it. Through. He's a great friend and having him to rely on and stuff, trust, have him like sort of do the stuff that guys don't want to do and whatnot, he'll, he'll do it and he's great at doing it. It's awesome to have him around. Grattan knew that after four seasons at Penn State, he wasn't ready to hang up the skates. But now that time has finally come. College hockey was amazing in a lot of aspects. And this past year, I'm forever grateful for. These are some of the closest guys that I know, and I'll take these friendships with me for the rest of my life. The Sun Devils will be on the hunt for a new captain next season as they move to the National Collegiate Hockey Conference. And whomever that may be, they will have some big shoes or skates to fill. In Tempe, Sammy Miller, Cronkite News. ASU finished their historic season earlier this month, splitting the se season series with Alaska Anchorage. The Devils ended the season off with 24 wins, 8 losses, and 6 overtime losses. Let's turn now to the weather because a big storm is moving into our state. Adriana Gonzalez-Chavez here, is here with us now. 
Adriana, what's headed our way? Yeah, guys, some big chances of storms moving in for your weekend, but let's look at your temperatures for this evening starting off. We're sitting about 68 degrees right now and dipping down to 63 degrees by 10 p.m. this evening and chances of clouds pretty much for the rest of your evening. Looking at our future cast across the state, chances of rain, and snow coming in. Chances of rain for Tucson, Casa Grande, Phoenix area. Chances of snow for White River, Sholo area, and Grand Canyon all the way pretty much through Sunday. And then looking at our low temperatures across the state, 40s for the south part of the state. Phoenix dipping down to 49 degrees, Casa Grande dipping down to 41 degrees. Low 20s for Flagstaff and Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon dipping down to 25 degrees. Flagstaff dipping down to 23 degrees for tomorrow and then looking at our high temperatures staying pretty cool here 62 degree high for Casa Grande 64 degree high for Phoenix Prescott hitting a high of 46 for tomorrow and then looking at our eight day forecast really nice weather for St. Patty's weekend high of 72 and a low of 50 and we will start to warm up as the week goes on getting pretty warm and above average for this time of year Wednesday hitting a high of 82, Thursday a high of 84, and then Friday partly cloudy with a high of 86 and a low of 58, so pretty warm for this time of year. I'm Adriana Gonzalez-Chavez from the, from the Weather Center. Back to you. I'm Marnie Jordan with a preview of the news headlines. Plus, local politicians block a bill to protect access to contraception. I'll have those stories and much more coming up after this quick break. What Conkite News means to me is opportunity. We do news right at Cronkite News, serving a community ethically, honestly, and truthfully. And we can provide a necessarily different angle, different voice for those people that really need it. The students, they have a lot of passion for journalism. I get to do a lot of stories about the Hispanic community. And we have access to cover all of these sorts of events and get media coverage of all these different personalities and athletes, and that's just a huge thing. But it's also a chance for people here to be humanized. Individuals of all walks of life. Cronkite News will help take the next generation of journalists onto their next careers. I am old enough to remember Walter Cronkite. We're putting a lot of pride on his name because we are practicing a lot of the, the things that he did. I think he'd be smiling from ear to ear. I. 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 We are Cronkite. At Cronkite News, learn to work behind the camera for studio production. Our students spend time learning the ins and outs of all that it takes to run a newscast. From setting up the studio to building exciting graphics, studio production provides a job for everyone. Whether it be running audio, technical directing, or directing the newscast, students can experience the action behind the scenes. Join our team today. Marnie Jordan with a look at the news from across Arizona. The White House has announced that President Joe Biden is set to visit Arizona next week. Arizona is predicted to be one of the most competitive states in this year's presidential election. Biden's visit coincides with the Arizona presidential preference election happening on the 19th. As of now, there are no details of his visit. On Wednesday, Arizona Republicans blocked an act to protect access to contraception. Democrats in the Arizona House and Senate drafted identical bills that would protect Arizonans' rights to birth control. On Wednesday, the sponsor of House Bill 2678 brought it up for an immediate vote. However, little was heard in the House. The Senate version of the bill, SB 1362, was voted on but did not pass, as all Senate Republicans voted against. Meanwhile, the Food and Drug Administration has approved a new pill to treat postpartum depression. But as Cronkite News reporter Maria Garcia tells us, this medicine is difficult to access. Depression is a common and serious condition, according to medical studies. One in ten women in the United States will experience postpartum depression after giving birth. A new pill is available, but at a high cost. Carolyn Larson's daughters are her world. I've always wanted to be 
a mom. I am the youngest of eight kids, and I have a bunch of nieces and nephews. Larson says she knew she was at risk for postpartum depression and prepared for the worst. She had a traumatic birth during her first pregnancy. And I hemorrhaged and had to go to the hospital. I couldn't have my husband with me. I couldn't have my new baby with me. And I was there for several days, and it was very isolating. Larson says it was hard to connect with her baby, and she was not in a good place. She says she never suffered from mental health problems in the past, and it was difficult to get help. I'm an educated person, and I still had a hard time finding help and trying to figure out where to get help. With her second pregnancy, she had different plans to have a less complicated birth. I was in contact with a psychiatric nurse practitioner about, okay, I know that I'm at risk for this, like what kind of plan can I make? But those feelings got stronger. And then within six weeks, those feelings of darkness came faster. A new medication may help women like Larson. Zranolone for sailors or Zuve, a steroid antidepressant. The disadvantage is that it has a cost of about $16,000 for a two-week treatment. You can imagine that most people are not going to be able to afford that. Sage Therapeutics offers a support program called Zerzuve for You. The program provides support coordinators with questions the patient may have. If you have insurance, you can get it down to a much lower copay, oftentimes zero dollars. Zerzuve improves symptoms of postpartum depression as early as the third day. When you're looking at sort of the Zerzuve data, you will know within three or four days if a person is responding or not. After overcoming depression, Larson dedicates herself to another passion beauty pageants. She won Miss Arizona International last year. This new medication is covered by some insurance companies, but not all. In the newsroom, Maria Garcia, Cronkite News. Sky Harbor food and beverage workers have voted to strike and could walk out any day. This video is from a previous action taken by workers for HMS Host, the largest concessions operator in the United States. On Wednesday, the group voted to strike. According to a recent report, over 50% of airport employees report suffering food insecurities. Workers could strike any day, which could impact travelers at Sky Harbor Terminal 3 and 4. Senate Major... Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer sharply criticized the Israeli Prime Minister today. During today's speech on the Senate floor, Schumer said Benjamin Netanyahu should no longer be in office. I believe in his heart he has his highest priority is, as is the security of Israel. However, I also believe Prime Minister Netanyahu has lost his way. I believe a new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said that calling for the removal of a democratically elected leader is, quote, unprecedented. Also in Washington today, Senator Bernie Sanders introduced a bill to create a four-day work week. He calls it the 32-hour work week act. It would cut the typical work week from 40 hours to 32 over a period of four years. The bill would, could also, would also present a cut in pay for the reduced hours. In 1940, we came up with a 40-hour work week. 1940, who is going to deny that the economy has not fundamentally and radically changed over that period of time. So to suggest that we have to maintain what we put in place 84 years ago does not make a lot of sense to me. The bill would need to pass in both chambers to become federal law. That's it for a look at the news. I'm Marnie Jordan, back to Lauren and Asher. Bobblehead giveaways at sporting events are definitely a fan favorite. Yes, they are, and tonight in Pittsburgh, it's a bobblehead giveaway of a Penguins legend, but there's a problem. After the break, we'll tell you how the Penguins bobblehead giveaway has turned into a whodunit case.
ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music, this is Sun City Garage, to sports coverage, against the Brewers in his last outing, he went to news, the bill also gives parents the ability to see, and entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. The Pittsburgh Penguins have been robbed. <laughs> yeah, crazy story here. The team announced today that a shipment carrying bobbleheads of Penguins legend Yarmir Yager was stolen. The Penguins learned that they were victims of theft after the bobbleheads that were set to be given away at tonight's game did not show up. Currently, it is an open investigation, and all fans in attendance tonight won't get their Yager bobblehead, but will receive a voucher to pick up the bobblehead at a later date. That's it for Cronkite News. Thank you for joining us. And to see top Arizona stories anytime, log on to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.